Well, good morning, everybody! You sound like y'all just woke up. Let's try this again. Good morning, everybody! <laughs> Welcome to Dinosaur Dimensions. Now, you all know what Dinosaur Dimensions is, correct? Okay, some of you don't. Let me fill you in. You see, Dinosaur Dimensions is me and my business partner, Larry Finkelmeyer. We have a laboratory on the West Coast, and we are dedicated to finding ways to bring dinosaurs to present day time. In fact, we invented the time machine. Yes, a machine that allows us to go back in time, capture dinosaurs, and we bring them back to the multi-layer dimensional time travel system. You know what I'm talking about, right? We bring them to present day time. We just grow the dinosaurs, but we shrink them and transport them, and then we grow them back to full size so you kids get to meet some real dinosaurs. Now, Larry this morning went back in time. He captured four dinosaurs for us and got here real early to drop them off so we could introduce you to four dinosaurs. Now, those four dinosaurs are located in these white plastic containers here behind me. Each one of these containers has a uh, dinosaur from the past who has been shrunken down real small and transported here for you kids to meet today. I'll tell you right now, I'm a little bit nervous. I'm very nervous. We have lots of small kids here today. Dinosaurs like to eat the small kids. Okay, it's a problem to have sometimes, but, but I'll tell you what. Are the kids who are here today, are you actually brave? Who's brave here today? We got brave kids? All right, we got brave kids. Excellent. How about smart kids? Any smart kids here today? Who's smart? Oh, we got lots of smart kids. You know, I'm going to test you right now and see just how smart you are with your dinosaur skills. Let's see. Uh, oh, sounds. What does a dinosaur sound like? No, they do not sound like that. They're about 10 times louder. What do they sound like? Yes, that is what they sound like. Uh, food, what do dinosaurs like to eat? Meat, that's right, there are meat-eating dinosaurs. Who knows what a meat-eating dinosaur is called? What? A carnivore, that's where a meat eater is called a carnivore. Now, what do other animals and dinosaurs like to eat? Plants. Lettuce, plants, that's right. They love eating plants. And those are called herbivores. Let's hear you say herbivores. <laughs> yes, that's right. So herbivores eat plants and carnivores eat meat. And let me tell you, the dinosaurs are excited to meet you today. Yeah, they're very excited. As I mentioned, Larry has four dinosaurs here today that he dropped off. We're going to get to meet all four of them in just a few minutes. Here's the problem, though. Larry did not tell me what four dinosaurs he brought. All right, but Larry did leave his clipboard behind with all that information. So you guys want to learn which dinosaurs we have today? Yeah. All right, let's take a look at the clipboard. We'll see what we have here today. All right, the clipboard is right here. <laughs> oh, boy. Our first dinosaur is a baby. Yes, we have a baby girl triceratops here today. Oh, let's see. Let's see. Right here. She's inside this time transport cylinder. We have her in this container. She has shrunk it down real small, and we will bring her to full size so you get to meet the baby triceratops. Now, it says she has not eaten today. Wait, are they herbivores or carnivores? Herbivores, that's right. They are plant eaters. So we are safe. We have a lot of plants around here. If she gets hungry, we'll make sure she eats. Again, our baby Triceratops. Now, notice how careful I'm being with these containers. We do not want to drop these, knock these over, tip them. Do you know why? If we do, we get an angry dinosaur. And we do not want an angry dinosaur running loose in town here, okay? So we're gonna be very careful. We do not knock these over. Again, our first dinosaur will be our baby Triceratops. Careful, 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 careful. Okay, all right. Our second dinosaur we get to meet today, we have, ooh. A pterodactyl. <laughs> what makes pterodactyls so cool? What can they do? They can fly, that's right. Let's all flop our pterodactyl wings this morning. There we go, nice. You guys definitely know what a pterodactyl is. Now let's have a full grown male pterodactyl. He's right here. And uh, he has eaten today, that's good. <laughs> they love eating fish. And Let's see, Larry fed him an entire box of fish sticks from Walmart. <laughs> a full box of fish sticks. He's got a full tummy. He's not going to be hungry. That's our second dinosaur, the pterodactyl. Now, did you know a pterodactyl is not a true dinosaur? Did you know that? Yeah, they're not a true, pure dinosaur. They're kind of more of a hybrid with a bird. Uh, nonetheless, we're still going to classify him today as a dinosaur for our show. But in reality, if you look up, they are not a true dinosaur, which is kind of a fun fact. Okay, very careful. All right. 
our third dinosaur we get to meet today. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see, Larry fed him six packs of hot dogs and two small children. So he has eaten today. He's very full, we don't have to worry. Our Velociraptor, we do not want to knock this over. That would be horrible to knock that one over. Very, very careful. Okay, and finally, the fourth dinosaur we get to meet today, we have, oh no. Oh no. <laughs> why, Larry, why? <laughs> careful. We do not want to knock the T-Rex over. Very careful. Knocking that over would make a very angry T-Rex. Let's see. We don't know how old it is. We don't know if it's a boy or a girl. Uh, it has not eaten yet today. We are going to have a hungry T-Rex. Oh, oh no. Uh, uh, if we have to feed the T-Rex, are there any kids here willing to lend a hand? Oh, wait. My arm? No, I need that stuff. They're not picky. Wait, wait, I got an extra one right here. We'll feed him this one. I bought this as a second-hand store. Oh, he's better. It was half off. Oh, these jokes came in handy. All right, so here we go. We got a baby Triceratops. We then got to be a pterodactyl, then a full-grown Velociraptor, and then a hungry T-Rex. I'm nervous. All right, well, we're gonna get started now. Before we can get started though, the library staff has asked me to go over safety protocol with you all. I wanna make sure you are all safe here today. So I want you all to please, first of all, I would say take note of your nearest emergency exits, but emergency exits are abundant in this park setting. So if we do have a dinosaur attack, which happens from time to time, if a dinosaur would choose to attack, I want you all to please just make your way out of the park in a safe and orderly fashion as easily as you can. Thank you. Now, secondly, we do have an alarm system in place in the event of a dinosaur attack. And let me tell you, we spared no expense when it came to installing the high-tech, state-of-the-art security system for you here today. In fact, Larry and I, we bought the most expensive alarm they had over at Dollar General. And we installed it here today to protect you all to keep you safe. Now, if you hear the alarm go off, that's your cue to panic. All right. Now, lastly, we have these right here. These are our growth containment chambers. We are going to grow the dinosaurs to full size out of these containers. Now, why would we do that? I'm glad you asked. Let me tell you why. You see, in the past, when dinosaurs roamed the Earth, we had different viruses and diseases and germs on our planet. Do we like germs? No. Do we like diseases? No. Do we like viruses? No. We want to keep them all in the past. So to do that, we are going to grow the dinosaurs safely out of these containers. These are high-grade polymer containers. They are lined with lead and then doused with hand sanitizer. Kill all the viruses and germs from the past to keep you safe, because you are our number one priority today. Lastly, do we have kids who like to help with library programs? Do we, do we want a couple kids who want to help? Because I'll tell you, we're going to need all the help of all the kids in the crowd today. And let me tell you why. We have a machine that powers and sorry, that shrinks and grows our dinosaurs. It's called the Dino 5000. Now, here's the problem we have with the Dino 5000. It does not run on electricity, because we don't have electric outlets in the past. <laughs> it doesn't run on gasoline, gas stations in the past. It runs on something called low-frequency sound waves. So in order for me to power the machine, we need to create a low-frequency sound wave every time I use it. Now, to make a low-frequency sound wave, what all you kids in the crowd to do is to make a very low, deep tone with your voice. 
All right, something like this. I want you all to go. All right. So on the count of three, let's hear your deepest, lowest tone that you can make. Are you ready? One, two, three. Okay, okay. Uh, pretty nice. Uh, we got the right tone. We got the right pitch. We just don't have enough volume. I know. Let's take our hands and we'll pat our lap at the same time. And we'll all go. Yes! I, I, I think that's going to work. I, I think, I think, I think it'll work. Um, okay, you know what? Here's the problem we have. If it does not work properly, we will aggravate the dinosaurs and will cause them to attack. So we should maybe test it out first on something else to make sure it works properly. What can we test the shrinking and growing machine out on? Any ideas? What, 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 who's got an idea? Nobody. We, we, what would be a good idea we could test it out on? What? On who? A rock. Oh. I don't know. Our rock's pretty far away from here. That was a dad joke. Yes! A wood chip. At least we need something that's alive. My hat. What if we use a kid from the audience? Yeah. Who would like to help me out here? Someone who's really brave and ready to do dedicate themselves to science. All right. How about you jumping up and down that blue shirt? Yeah, come on up here. Let's give this guy a big round of applause. There we go. Coming right over here next to me. How are you doing today? Good. What's your name? John, let's give John a big round of applause. He has donated his body for science today. John, right? Now, John, we are going to use the Dino 5000 machine on you. We're going to shrink John real small. But don't worry, we'll grow you back to full size before you go back to your seat, all right? All right, John, we'll make this very easy on you. We're going to give you this to sit on. What is this, everybody? This is not a chair. What is it? A stool. That's right. Isn't this a nice stool? Yes, they're giving these away for free at Walmart last week. I'm serious, free. It's a stool sample. Yeah, it was a free sample. And look here, John. A stool softener. You like stool softeners? Yeah, me too. All right, we'll put this right here, buddy. You can have a seat right there on the stool. All right, are you comfortable? Yes, because life is more comfortable when you're on a stool softener, isn't it? Yes. All right, now, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to grab the Dino 5000 machine. Now, John, you have a very difficult job. You need to remain seated, hold perfectly still, and look straight forward at the audience. All right? That's all you need to do. This will not hurt that much. All right, get the machine on here, the Dino 5000. Ooh. Ooh, boy. Calibrate here. All right. Here we go, the Dino 5000. <laughs> Now, let me tell you how this works. What I need you all to do is to stare. Stare right into the middle of the spinning disc on the Dino 5000. Now, I don't want you looking at me. I don't want you staring at John. No, I want your eyes glued to the middle of that spinning disc and don't look away. I will count down from the number 10. When I get to number one, follow my instructions, and you're gonna see John shrink before your very eyes. But if you want this to work, you have to keep staring and don't look away, all right? Now, I, if you blink, it's okay, you may blink. Otherwise, keep staring and don't look away. All right, now, here's the deal, too. When I start counting down, I need all you kids to make that low frequency noise to power the machine. All right, so, John, you hold real still. I'm going to back up just a little bit so people on the sides can see. All right. All right, so once again, where are you kids going to stare? In the middle, are you going to look away? No, or it's not going to work. All right, John, hold real still. Kids, stare here. Let's go. All right, keep staring and don't look away, whatever you do. All right, you guys are doing awesome with the sounds. I'm going to start the countdown from 10. When I get to 1, follow my instructions. Until then, keep staring and don't look away. Here we go. Keep staring. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Don't look away. 4, Three, two, one. Look at his head. There we go, it's shrinking. Oh. You okay, John? Does it hurt? No, you have headaches. 
Okay, that's right. Okay, that's right. All right, and he um, shrugs his head. Let's grow his head back to full size. We're not going to leave you that way, John. Don't worry. That looks so weird. Okay, we will not leave him that way. We got this popped into reverse. Let's all stare again, and we'll grow John's head back to full size. Once again, do not look away. Here we go. All right, once again, keep staring, and don't look away from the little that disc. I'm going to count down from 10, and when I get to 1, follow those instructions. Until then, keep staring and keep making that low frequency noise. Here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Keep staring, right? 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. John's head! <laughs> there we go. It's back to his normal size. Give John a big round of applause for helping. Awesome job, John. You can go back to your seat. Good job, buddy. All right. Well, it looks like the Dino 5000 is working. That's good news. That means we can start bringing out the dinosaurs. Woo, you guys ready for dinosaurs? Yeah! All right. Now, remember, I need you guys to make that low frequency noise so we can grow the dinosaurs when the time comes, all right? So get ready with those sounds. All right. First of all, who remembers what our first dinosaur was today? What was it? The Triceratops, the baby Triceratops. So let's go ahead and grab her right away. Again, we're gonna be very careful when we leave her container. We do not want to knock these over, bump them, drop them. That would be horrible, because they get very angry. We're gonna place her into the growth containment chamber, the chamber we will grow the dinosaur out of. All right, now first, how many horns does a Triceratops have? Three. Three, oh, let me show you here. We have a little baby fossil here. If you want to be real technical, it's two horns and a tusk. One, two, three. A tusk is a type of horn, but there are three points. One, two, three. Two horns and a tusk. The three horns points make up the tri of the triceratops. You will see those on our little baby girl. Now, we also have this here, this plated big shield, crusted frill shield on her neck. Now, why would a dinosaur want a big shield on her neck? Protect her, that's right. You know what? These dinosaurs are very low to the ground. And those T-Rexes love to eat them. And a dangerous place to get bit is on the back of the neck. There's a lot of blood and veins and arteries in your spine, right? So having that big shield protects them from those large dinosaur attacks on their neck to keep them safe. Watch for her shield and her three points when we bring her out. All right. You ready to meet our first dinosaur? All right, let's make that low frequency noise to power the machine. Are you ready? Here we go. Everybody, help me out here. Oh, okay, it's working! It's working! Oh, oh, oh she's so cute! Oh, 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 she's so adorable! Did you see her? She wants this big! Oh, is she cute? You would love her! Oh. You want to see her? Yeah! Wait, hold on, hold on. All right, bring her out. Let's bring her out. Our baby girl Triceratops! <laughs> Oh, is she cute? She's like the size of a dog. Like, easy. All right, I'm going to count to three. One, two, three. Oh, here she is. It's our little baby girl Triceratops. Look at that. She's probably never seen many people before. It's a lot of people, isn't it? Yeah. Now, her family's fossils are found right here in the United States. Parts of the country like Western, North, and South Dakota. Uh, Montana, Colorado, Wyoming, Utah, Idaho, places like that are often where fossils are found for her species. Now, if you look carefully, you will see the two horns and the tusk on her face. <laughs> I'm not a plant. She's hungry. <laughs> she is hungry. She also got that big crested frill shield on the back of her neck, that big shield for her protection. Now, we are going to go ahead and uh, you know, maybe we should feed her first. What do you think? She's a herbivore, right? Who wants to help me feed the baby Triceratops? You and the pink, you had your hand up real fast. You want to come help me? Come on up here. What's your name? Adley. Ashley? Oh, Adley. Okay, Adley. Come over here, Adley. Adley, first you can pet her first. Get the door. She likes you. There you go. Good job, Adley. Now, Adley's going to go and grab the plant off the table. Is the plant there? And she's going to get to feed the baby Triceratops. So watch carefully. Adley's going to get to... Oh, she's hungry. Adley, you were doing an awesome job. Give Adley a big clap, everybody. She's feeding the baby Triceratops and doing a wonderful job. You didn't let go, Adley. You did an awesome job. Thanks for helping. There we go. Adley fed the baby Triceratops. She's still munching away. Good job. That's our future dinosaur handler right there. Now, we're going to put her away and bring out our next dinosaur. But you know what? 
She does not have a name yet. We have to give her a name. What's a good name for a baby Triceratops? Bella? Bella? Bella. Bella. Stella? Stella, all right, we'll go Stella, that's a great name. We'll name her little baby Stella. I would like you guys to all wave goodbye to baby Stella. All right, I'm gonna take the plant from her. I'm gonna toss the plant into the box to lure her back in. So here we go. Oh, oh she went, hey, stop, that's my finger, stop. She's hungry, all right. We're gonna put her back so she can finish her meal. So you go, Stella, just go, whoa, whoa. She's hungry. All right, we got her back in there. She wants that plant. All right, let's shrink her down real small. Are you ready? Make that low frequency noise, everybody. Here we go. And she down. All right, we got her back down. Little baby Stella is back to her small size in the plastic container. We can now send her back to the past to be with her family. She probably misses her mommy and daddy a lot because she's just a baby. So we'll make sure to get her safely back home. All right. Well, who's ready for our second dinosaur today? Who is our second dinosaur? Who remembers? The pterodactyl. That's right, our flying reptile of the past. But very carefully, again, we cannot drop these. We do not want angry dinosaurs. Very careful. Now, I will warn you, in my past experience with pterodactyls, they want to fly. He's going to try to fly away from me. I need to hold him. We, we, we can't let him fly around the park, first of all. But he'll fly away. He'll be gone forever. Disrupt the entire space-time continuum. Plus, they poop everywhere, too. Yeah, it's not pretty. Trust me. So, yeah, it's gross. I know. So, I will hold him very close to make sure we keep the park clean and that he does not fly away. But he's going to try to fly. I just know it. So, all right. Let's make that low frequency noise and bring out our pterodactyl. Are you ready? Here we go. Wait a second, wait. It's not a pterodactyl. It's a pteranodon. Yes, pteranodon. They are very similar to pterodactyls. They get mistaken all the time. Larry made a mistake. He grabbed the wrong one from the past. But you know what? That's okay, because that's how we learn things in life, by making mistakes. Mistakes are not always bad. But you know what? This is cool because we don't get to see pteranodons here that She got a very special, special opportunity. All right, you guys ready to meet the pteranodon? All right, let's make that low frequency noise and bring him out. Here we go. Oh. Oh, is he cool? Oh. 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 Oh, oh. Okay. all right. He wants to fly away. Hold on. I told you he's going to try to fly. All right, let me get out here. Hang on. Is he, is he? Hey, buddy. Hey, I got you. Yeah. There we go. Woo! We got him out. Here he is, everybody. It is our turn up. Oh, my God. That was close. He tried to fly away. I told you that would happen. Now, pteranodons are pretty cool. They've got these giant cones on their head. Look at that. Those cones help them to steer when they fly. They can turn their head left or right, just like a runner on a boat. It just steers the direction they want to fly in the sky. Now, they also have fingers on their wings. How many fingers do you see on his wings? It looks like three, but it's actually four. I'll show you this. One, two, three. One, two, three, and number four is the big, long finger on the bottom side of his wing. That big, long finger helped him to control his wing from flying and gliding. The smaller fingers helped him to capture and eat his favorite food, which are, of course, fish. Now, their family's fossils are not found here at all. Most of them are found in places like uh, Germany and Europe. Uh, the cliffs and mountains of Germany are very popular for their fossils. Now, we have to get this guy going back. We need to give him a name before we can put him back. What's a good name? What's a good name? What's that? I can't hear the other kids. Jiona? Shy? Shy. Oh, shy. I don't think he's very shy. We'll name him Shy. That's a great name. All right. I want you guys to wave goodbye to Shiona. All right, Shy. Can you wave goodbye to the kids? Give him a wave. 
There you go, he's waving goodbye. Let's give him a big round of applause. Oh, God! Oh, God. All right, we're gonna get him back. He's trying to get away. Real careful. All right, let's get him back in there. Sorry, he's not shy, I'll tell you that. All right, let's go, make that noise. We gotta shrink him down, let's go. We did it. We got our Tyrannobot back down to his small size. He is now ready to get sent back to the past to fly with his flock of reptiles. All right. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Things are about to get very dangerous here, kids. We have our Velociraptor coming up. And then even worse, our hungry T-Rex. All right, let's waste no time. We can wait for our Velociraptor. <laughs> All right. Again, very careful. We do not drop this. <laughs> we don't want to drop either of these. Now, Velociraptors are called pack hunters. What does it mean to be a pack hunter? They work together. That's right, as a team or a group. A group of Velociraptors will hunt together to catch their food. They will live together and hunt together. Now, let me show you something here about this. We got right there. All right, now, let me show you this. This right here is a claw from a Velociraptor. These claws help them to hunt in several different ways. First of all, they have claws like these on their feet. And those claws can get a good grip into the soil. They can actually run very fast by using these claws to get good traction. One of the fastest running dinosaurs that ever lived with a Velociraptor. They could run 30 to 40 miles per hour. That's how fast they were. And they also had these claws on their hands. And you see, the pack would surround a much larger dinosaur than themselves. They whip out their claws, and they go, they'd smash the flesh of a giant dinosaur, bring it to its knees. And then they would take their dozens of razor sharp teeth. Look at these teeth. They would bite, they would chew, they would put all kinds of. Oh. Oh no! Oh no! No, no, no! Oh, no. Uh, I knocked over the Velociraptor! We have an angry dinosaur! Velociraptor? Yeah! Are you serious? Yeah! Are you all crazy? Yeah! <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah! He's not gonna be happy. No, we better not. We better not. No, no. no. Okay. All right, fine. I will bring out the angry Velociraptor. But if anything happens, the kids on this blanket are responsible. Okay. Yes, you do. Okay. <sighs> I'm doing this. All right. Let's bring out the angry Velociraptor. All right, let's make that low frequency noise, everybody. Here we go. All right, we need louder than that. He's big. Oh, no, no. He's not happy. This is a bad idea. Oh, no. The alarm. The dinosaur alarm. Oh no! Oh no! This is bad! Bad, bad! <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna get him out. Hold on. Oh, whoa! He's big! Easy! Super angry Velociraptor! Oh, 
You were the ones that wanted him out, yeah. <laughs> now, the last of Raptors are mean little hungry meat-eating machines, I'll tell you that, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. But their family's fossils are not found here in the United States at all. Most of them are found overseas in Asia. Parts of the world like Mongolia, China, Thailand, places like that, are where their fossils are frequently found. Now, what movie made Velociraptors very popular? Jurassic Park and Jurassic World, that's right. And Jurassic World has a dinosaur who looks just like this. What is her name? Blue, Blue that's right. This guy looks a lot like Blue. Now, we are going to put him away. But here's the deal. We have to give him a name. Yeah. Blue? All right, we're getting him blue. William Blue, I want you guys to all wave goodbye to Blue. Hurry, wait. All right, we're going to get him back. Now, here's the problem. He's a little bit nippy. So, I'm going to grab him by the mouth. Hey! I'm going to grab his mouth. As soon as I do, we're going to go ahead and you guys going to start making that low frequency, frequency noise so we can put him away. All right? So, guys, get ready. Here we go. One, two, hey! Two, three. Go, make a noise, make a noise. Ugh. All right, we gotta get him down. Yeah. Yeah. We got him, he's gone, he's gone, he's gone. Woo! We did it! Yeah. We got Blue back down to his small size. And we are good to go. To send him back to the past. To be with his path of velociraptors. All right. Well. We got one more dinosaur left. The T-Rex, that's right. Now, according to our paperwork, Larry did not say how old the dinosaur is. I don't know how old it is. I don't even know if it's a boy or a girl. All I know is it has not eaten. It will be hungry. Here's our two problems. Number one. If it is a full-grown T-Rex, it will be 15 to 17 feet tall. That's pretty tall. We have space here. That's the good part. The bad news is this. Remember the claw of the Velociraptor? The T-Rex claw is much larger. It's about the length of a banana. A lot sharper than a banana. Yeah. Their teeth are about the same size. I am more worried about those claws and teeth, especially if he has not eaten or she has not eaten. So, we're going to very carefully grab our T-Rex here. Very, very carefully. We are not going to drop it, no. I almost lost a finger with the raptor. Very carefully placing the growth of the All right. Who's ready to be a T-Rex today? All right. Let's make that low frequency noise and bring him or her to full size. Here we go. Oh, it's a boy! He's a boy! Oh! 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 What? Wait a second here. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> so Larry said he was going to drop us off a of T-Rex, right? Yeah, he did. He said I was be hungry, right? Well, it's hungry. You want to see why it's hungry? Check this out. The reason he's so hungry, this little guy, and I say little guy because he just hatched today. I will tell you that for sure. He's a brand new baby T-Rex. Look at this guy. Super cool. Now his family's fossils are found right here in the United States, just like the Triceratops. Parts of the country like North and South Dakota, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, Colorado, spots like that. Now. Has anybody here ever been to Chicago to the Field Museum and seen the full T-Rex Sue on this way there? Sue is a very impressive T-Rex. She's a complete, entire fossil set of a T-Rex. Well, let me tell you why people still dig for dinosaur bones to this day. Do you know what her fossil set sold for to the Chicago Museum? I want to eat them. At auction, her entire fossil set sold for $32 million. That's a lot of money. You got one rich aunt there, buddy. Yeah, I bet she's going to get you a birthday gift next year, right? Yeah, she will. Nice birthday gifts. Now, if you have a chance to go to the Field Museum in Chicago, stop in and say hi to Sue. Tell her we sent you. Yeah. Now, we are going to put this guy away because we got to feed him. 
but he does not have a name yet. What's a good name for a baby T-Rex? What's that? Grayson? Grayson, oh yeah, he likes it. We'll let him Grayson. I want you folks to all wave goodbye to Grayson. Now Grayson, I want you to wave goodbye to all the people out here, can you do that? There you go, this is Grayson waving goodbye. Let's get him back in here, we gotta feed him. Grayson, there we go. All right, let's grab our hand sandwich. Here we go. Whoa. All right, we're gonna shrink him back down. Are you ready? Make that low frequency noise. Here we go. Yeah, we did. And little baby Grayson is back down to his small size. We can now send him back to the past to be with his family. He probably hasn't even met his mom yet because he was probably taken right from the nest by Larry. That Larry. Guess what? With all your kids' help, we brought all four dinosaurs to full size today. You guys did it. Give yourselves a round of applause for helping. We did it.